Uh, welcome to um, our first webinar, Getting Started for Give Out Day. Uh, my name is Linda Gerhart. I'm the Senior Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause, and I've been with the company since 2016, and have helped a lot of giving events um, get started and hosted a lot of webinars, so I'm really happy to be here with you today. And I'm also joined by Nicole Pagan, the Program Officer at Give Out Day, um, at the Horizons Foundation, rather. So, hi, Nicole. Hello, everybody. Um, I just want to welcome you to the webinar and say thank you for joining us um, this afternoon. Um, it's really exciting for us to put on Give Out Day again. Uh, if you don't know about Horizons Foundation, we are the um, world's oldest LGBTQ community foundation. We are celebrating our 40th anniversary this year. It's our Ruby anniversary. Um, and we have been the host of Give Out Day since 2016, although we have been involved in the project um, since its inception in 2013. Uh, we were previously wrangling the Bay Area organizations to uh, help get them um, up and running and provide support and um, social media and all of that kind of stuff for them. Um, and so when we took over Give Out Day as the organizer for the national project, it was really just kind of um, uh, building on that building block in and, and uh, going national with it. So um, as I said, we're very excited to have you participate in Give Out Day with us this year. Um, go ahead and type your questions in if you have questions as we're going along, um, as Linda said, and then we will try to answer them all at the end. And if you have any questions uh, afterwards that don't get answered in the webinar, if you think of something else, you can email us. Um, the better or um, email to use for me is not my npagan at horizonsfoundation.com. Org. Um, it's the give out day at horizonsfoundation.org, but either one really works. Um, so with that, I will go ahead and pass it back to Linda and we'll get started. Thank you so much. Um, and just as uh, Nicole mentioned, we're going to do a Q&A session at the end of the webinar just so we can get through the presentation. A lot of your questions may be answered during the course of the presentation. So if you think of something that you would like to ask while I'm presenting, just go into your GoToWebinar panel and type your question into that questions box and we'll make sure to get to it at the end. Or if it's something that we need to take offline, we'll just reach out to you and answer your question. Um, and just as another bit of housekeeping, we will be, we are recording this webinar and you will have access to it through the Give Out uh, site under the resources tab. And we'll also upload the slides there as well. So here's a look at today's agenda. Um, we're mostly gonna be focusing on the basics today. Um, we're gonna walk through the basics for Give Out Day, and then we're gonna jump into uh, getting registered, navigating your nonprofit page on the platform. And then at the end, as I mentioned, we're gonna do the Q&A session. All right, so we're gonna start with Give Out Basics. Um, Give Out Day is a 24 hour long event that takes place on April 23rd, 2020. The event runs from midnight to midnight Eastern time. Um, early giving for Give Out Day has, starts on March 26th, 2020, and the prize money will be announced soon so that you can start planning. Um, definitely when prizes are announced, you'll be able to sort of have your plan for the day coalesce and put together your marketing strategy so that you can target some of those prizes. So before we launch into the specifics of getting into your profile, I really wanted to take a step back and talk about how a giving day works. Um, you know, what are they all about? What are they for? Um, and a giving day is really a, a very unique campaign that's presented by a host, in this case, Horizons Foundation, and that allows other organizations to compete with other nonprofits or against their own goal, if they're not into competing directly with other nonprofits, to win prize money. Um, giving days are a really exciting way for you to engage uh, community partners, sponsors, peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, and, um, and donors as well. It's very exciting for them to be involved in a giving event and really just spread the word about your organization and your mission and raise funds for your cause. Um, the limited time frame creates a sense of urgency that donors tend to respond really strongly to, and the prizes that are available give you a fresh messaging opportunity. They're really excellent marketing tools that you can use to connect with your donors and get them really excited about giving. 
To participate in Give Out Day, um, you'll want to register your organization if you have not already done so. Um, once you're registered, you can customize your profile on Mighty Cause. Um, we're the platform for the event, so we handle the technology end of things and provide a nonprofit page, which you can use to create fundraisers if you wanted to engage some peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers and so on. And you can just use that as a static page to participate in the giving event. It's connected to the Give Out Day site. Um, so so everything's already connected once you've registered. Um, uh, so once you've registered and you've been approved, you can just start planning for your campaign. Um, you can invite other people who are involved in your organization to participate as peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. Um, once giving has started on March 26th, you can start promoting your campaign. And of course, you'll want to really push the donation ask on the actual giving day, April 23rd. Um, you'll need to raise money to win the awesome prizes that will be available. So raising money and winning prizes are directly connected to each other. This is the homepage for the, give out, for the Give Out Day this year. You'll see the URL here on the left, and I would definitely recommend bookmarking that so you can get back to it really easily. <clears throat> Excuse me, once the Giving Day starts, this is where you'll see the leaderboards that will indicate what place you're in, as well as any additional prizes that are going on. So make sure you bookmark it so that you're able to check that easily. This page, um, as it is right now, has all the tools you need to get started. You'll see the register button is right there at the top. If you haven't registered yet, this is where you can go to do so. Uh, the Giving Day homepage also has these tabs that include the rules and resources like the FAQ for frequently asked questions um, and toolkit and just additional information that will help you get oriented to Give Out Day. This is also uh, where you'll find information about prizes once they're announced. All right, so we're going to move into getting started on the platform for Give Out Day. Um, first things first, again, I'm sorry to be a broken record, but if you have not registered for the event for that first yet, that is the first place you want to start. Um, if you have any questions at all that are pertaining to registration, you can email us at support at mightycause.com and we can look into it if you've submitted your uh, registration but haven't yet been approved or if you have any questions, we're here to help you at support at mightycause.com. Um, to register, first you'll need to log in or sign up for an account on Mighty Cause and claim your organization on Mighty Cause if this is the first time visiting the, you visited the site. Once you've done that, you'll unlock the registration questions and you can submit the form. Um, once you register, you'll receive a confirmation message and approval email. After you claim your organization, you'll also be able to add administrators to your organization's account on Mighty Cause. So multiple people can access and help you run your campaign. So that's really great if you have people in your development office who may need to access donor information, you can add them as admins. Um, if you have volunteers who might be helping you out with uh, either creating peer-to-peer -peer funds fundraisers or organizing for you or helping you with social media. Um, you can also give them admin access if you wish. Um, you can have 10 admins total, so that's quite a few. Um, definitely you want to keep it to your inner circle because they can access donor information through the platform. But if you have anyone at your organization who needs access to this page either to edit it or use some of the backend functions, you can actually do that through your Mighty Cause page under your settings. Uh, once you filled out and submitted your registration form, you'll need to complete the items on your to-do list. That's that little blue box um, at the bottom on the lower right-hand side of this slide. Um, this is located on the home screen on your nonprofit profile right next to your metrics. So when you log into Mighty Cause and you navigate to your organization's page, you'll be taken to this page with all of your metrics as well as your to-do list. Um, there are five basic items to complete. Um, you need to add a background image to your page or use from one of them one of the ones from our gallery that's provided for you. Upload your logo, which will represent you throughout the Give Out Day site. Add a story, which we also call a description, um, that tells visitors to your profile about what your organization does, what your mission is, why you're participating in Give Out Day, and why um, they should donate to your organization. It's really your space to 
um, make it your own and make your case for donating to your organization. Um, and you'll also want to build a thank you page to thank your donors. Um, the thank you page displays right after they complete their donation, so it's a really great opportunity to get that donor, say thank you, and acknowledge them immediately. Um, and then the last thing you'll want to do on your to-do list is set up electronic funds transfer so that you can get your disbursements through direct deposit. Um, if you click the links in your to-do list, you will be taken right to the spots on your profile where you can easily complete that task. So that's very easy for you to go through this list. Um, this isn't required, um, but profiles that are filled out on Mighty Cause tend to get more donations. So when you show your profile some love, donors usually see that and are more willing to show you some love in return. Um, when a pro profile is kind of naked and bare, donors can go a little bit, oh, I don't know if this is legit. Obviously, you're, you're legit, but the more love you put into your profile and making it your own and making it represent your nonprofit's brand, the better you will do on Give Out Day. Um, so before you get into the weeds of planning your campaign, thinking about marketing, putting emails together, we really recommend taking the time to complete this list. Um, and you have us here to support you. So if you need help, if you have trouble accessing a feature or understanding how to edit it, um, you can email us at support at mightycause.com or check our support library. Um, we do have some walkthroughs and videos that can help you out, um, but we're here to support you so you can get your page looking great for the giving day. Um, we also recommend taking some time to get to know your dashboard. Um, your dashboard, which we like to call your Mighty Cause Manager, is the admin bar that appears on the left side of the screen when you're logged in and on your nonprofit's profile. Um, you'll automatically land on your welcome screen or your home screen, which we talked about a little bit earlier, um, but but you can go to that bar on the, the menu on the left-hand side to navigate to different areas on your profile. Um, under profile, which is one of the tabs there, um, you can edit your page in the page editor, editor or you can adjust your page settings, which is also where you can set your goal for your event and enable a progress bar on your page so that you can display how close you are to achieving your fundraising goal. You can also go into Live View to see how your page will look to visitors without actually logging out of your account. And this is really just important to mention because while you're in the page editor and you're actively making changes to your page, you may see things that are not going to be visible to visitors to your page, um, such as sections that haven't been filled out yet. Um, so if you're curious about how it will look to visitors, use that live page view so that you can see exactly how it'll look to somebody who lands on your page who's not logged in as an admin. Um, below that on your dashboard is the report section, which is going to be your best friend after the giving event. Um, that's your one-stop shop for everything that's related to donation management. You're able to preview and export your uh, donation report, and you can view and manage your disbursements. And one of the things I do want to point out is that when you go to your donation report and you're looking at it um, in, your, in your browser, you'll see an abbreviated version of that because there's a lot of data about each donation that we we just can't reasonably fit into that smaller space and keep it mobile friendly for you. Um, so when you want details about your donors, you need to actually export the, the CSV, the spreadsheet there, and those will give you the, the in the weeds details about those donations when you're reconciling your, your report. <clears throat> Part of your to-do list is setting up EFT. You can do that under reports in the disbursement section. Um, signing up for EFT allows you to receive your funds faster. Um, funds are also dispersed by check, but there is a $5 check fee for check disbursements. Um, so if you have any questions about fund disbursements, you can email support and our support team will be happy to help you out. Um, next on your Mighty Cause Manager is the fundraising view. Um, your donor experience section, which we're going to talk about in the next few slides, as well as the matching grants tool. Um, we're going to talk more about that later on, but those are accessible under the fundraising tab um, on your dashboard. Um, you can manage your uh, nonprofit settings like URL customization and add people as admins or remove them if you added somebody that you need to remove from having access to your page um, under settings. 
So as I was mentioning uh, before, your profile is really the face of your nonprofit for the giving event. So you'll want to make sure that it looks good and it represents you well. Um, just so you know, your profile link is the link that you'll share with your supporters and ask them to donate to your challenge page. So just copy and paste the URL from your browser into an email or a social post or wherever you're advertising the campaign. So when you're on that main profile, not you know in a report or anything like that, and you see organization slash the name of your organization, that is the link that you can share with your supporters. Um, so as you're going through your to-do list, you'll want to customize this page to match your brand. There are two ways to start customizing a profile. Um, you can click profile in your Mighty Cause Manager and choose page editor from the submenu. This will open up everything you're about to edit. And if you're a list person and you prefer to do it that way, you can go down this list and make sure you hit everything you want to. The other way to customize, as you can see in the visual here on this slide, is to click profile and then just use the little pencil icons that appear on the page that indicate that a section can be edited. I'm one of those people who likes to just click the button that has the pencil. So for me, that's easier, but some people like to go into submenus and go down a list. And both of those options are there for you, depending on how you prefer to work. The first thing you'll want to do when you're editing your profile is upload your organization's logo. Um, you can set that you can up in the uh, theme sec. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can use that pencil icon uh, that we're showing you here to um, open up a section for editing. Logos do need to have a one-to-one -one aspect ratio to fit. That means they're square. The logos on Mighty Cause are the same aspect ratio as many social media sites. So an easy thing that you can do is just upload a Facebook um, avatar that you've been using because you can use that here as well. Um, you'll want to make sure your lo logo doesn't clash with your background image. Um, and on that subject, the next thing you'll want to do is upload a background image. Um, you can see the background image on the example here is of two people sitting on a couch. Um, your background image will look best if it's mostly text-free and it's a strong image that's represented representative of your nonprofit. Um, the important thing to remember here is that Mighty Cause is a fully mobile responsive site. And as you know, when you're looking at something on a desktop computer um, or desktop monitor, it looks very different on your phone. The orientation changes. So keeping text away from that is really the best way to guarantee that your, um, your profile is going to look great no matter what somebody's using to view it. So if you have a lot of text overlay or things that are very specific to whatever view you're using when you edit your page, those things may get lost because of the mobile responsiveness. And what mobile responsive means is that instead of having a totally different page that loads when somebody's using a tablet or a phone versus a desktop monitor, um, it, it, the, the site is just built to respond to the device it's being used on. So text overlays for the background image don't really look as great and we can't guarantee that that won't get cut off if you orient it for a desktop monitor and somebody's looking at it on a smartphone. It's just going to look different. So images that kind of fade into the background and make your logo pop are really your best option here. Um, something else you can do to make your profile match your brand is uh, changing the theme color. Um, the theme color allows you to pick a consistent color that shows throughout the experience your organization provides supporters. It's very easy to set. You just click the button that says edit theme on the background image and it'll open up that section for editing. This is where you'll also choose a background image. And from there, you can apply an overlay to your background if you want. Um, you can also pick a color from the color picker. Um, if you don't really have one in particular, you just want to see what looks best. But if you have a hex code um, for, you know, say, the colors that are in your logo, you can also just enter that as well. Um, the one thing you want to avoid is white buttons because they can't be seen against the white background. So just stick with colors that are easy to see um, and, you know, stick with what's, what looks good with your logo. All right, so the about section of your page is your chance to explain what your nonprofit is all about. Um, it's an inline text editor, editor, so you just go right to that section and click into it, and all you have to do is start writing. Um, you can add media to your story to jazz things up a little bit. Um, again, it's inline text editor, so you're able just to edit and play around with it and make it look good. Um, you can do things like adding links, uploading images. Um, you can link to videos. Um, just as a note about that, if you 
you have a campaign video you want to share, you will need to upload it first to YouTube or Vimeo, um, both of which offer free basic accounts. Uh, we just don't have the ability to also be a, a video hosting platform. So you'll just need to upload it into one of those uh, websites first. Um, so they get embedded in your story so um, that people can view them there. They can view your campaign video there. Um, you can also add bulleted or numbered lists. Um, one thing that I do recommend is as much as possible in your story, breaking up walls of text. text. You really want people to be able to read what information you make available to them. So using things like headers um, and images and having, uh, you know, different graphic elements there um, really makes it more readable for people. People tend to be a little bit turned off by a giant wall of text, um, but breaking it up, as you can see, um, is was done in this story in the example page on the slide, really does help it become more readable and helps you make a better case because people are actually going to stick around and be more likely to read the information that you've provided for them. Um, so this is really a spot where you want to go in depth about your work and make a strong appeal to donors. Tell them why your organization needs their support and show the impact of your work. Um, one very cool piece that you can add is custom tabs. If you have any extra info you want to add that doesn't necessarily need to be part of your story, you can create a custom tab where you can keep everything organized and easier to find and allow people to navigate that if they'd like more information about a particular subject. Um, so you can add any kind of information you'd like into a custom tab, um, information about upcoming events, uh, frequently asked questions, information about your staff, acknowledgments, resources, links for more information, whatever you can dream to put in those custom tabs, you can make that a reality. Um, you can create up to three custom tabs that you can label however you'd like and fill with whatever content you'd like to make your profile page awesome and an interesting experience where people can click around and get more information and learn more about the important work that you do. The media gallery on your organization's profile is where you'll be able to add any additional images that you have that represent your organization. Um, it's a really great way to visually show don donors what your organization does and where the funds are going. Um, you can also connect your organization's Instagram, which imports the uh, pictures that you already have there. Um, connecting your Facebook or Instagram accounts not only provides additional content to make your page a little bit more interesting, which encourages people to stick around, um, but it also lets people coming to your page know that you have these social accounts so they can easily like your page or follow you on Instagram. Um, you can optimize your social sharing settings within the settings section of your Mighty Cause Manager. Um, and basically what that means is that you can standardize the social template whenever somebody shares your logo or campaign. Um, so you can, uh, if somebody wants to retweet you, you can have them tag you so that you're aware and it shows up in TweetDeck or if you have a hashtag that you're using, um, you can set those up in your settings under your social sharing settings. Um, and you can also add a, a link preview image that is uh, suitable for Facebook so it doesn't get cut off or look funky. So those are things that you'll also want to take a look at as you're customizing your profile. The last submenu item within your profile is your page settings. Um, this is a little bit dry, but it's very important to understand what's here. Um, this is where you can go to update your metrics to show on your page publicly, um, things like showcasing dollars raised, a progress bar if you wanted to, to publicly display your fundraising goal, as well as your donor count. Um, you can also update the calculation period. So if you have used Mighty Cause before, it allows you to sort of reset that number so that only donations that are applicable to the goal you're working toward now count towards your progress bar. Um, the page settings is also where you'll find code for a widget that you can embed on your website if you didn't want don donors to move away from your website to make their donation. So for instance, if you have a, a website that gets pretty good traffic, you can embed the Mighty Cause donation widget on your site that processes donations through Mighty Cause and it does count toward give out day as long as that donation is made after early donations are open. Um, so that's something that you can also consider to sort of boost your fundraising for give out day. So you'll definitely want to spend some time customizing this profile, get familiar with where everything is, and uh, take some of the tips into account because the more work you put into it, the chances 
are better that you will do well during give out day and make the most of this giving event. Um, you can have the best campaign strategy in the world, but when your profile and the page that actually is where people make donations, they click that donate button, looks like you haven't shown it any love and it doesn't look like your brand, um, you may end up losing donors. So it really is an investment in doing well on the giving day. All right, so get, getting more into a little bit of the dry information that's nonetheless important to know, um, you can access reports on donations and disbursements in the report section of your Mighty Cause Manager. Again, this is going to be your best friend during the giving day, so learn where these things are, get used to them, uh, try exporting a report and see what's on that, um, because it's just get, gonna be really important when you're marrying things up and you're getting your disbursement and you're reaching out to donors to thank them. All, this is where all of that information is. Um, you can find disbursements as an offline donations as well in this section. So if you get your disbursement and you're like, hey, this is a little different than what I thought I was going to get, you can get the disbursement report. Um, it shouldn't be that different, but sometimes uh, you're thinking the full amount in your head for everything you raised, but because the giving encompasses a few different months, um, you may get that, that money in smaller portions. So if you have questions about your disbursement, you can access here as well. Um, your donation report will be available to you in real time and include any include information about the donor, like their name, their email, any designations or dedication options you have, the gross and net amount of their donation, as well as any fees associated with their donation. Um, donors do have the option to cover fees. Um, so, you know, that's always helpful to know, did they cover fees? Did they not cover fees? because that also might help you explain any differences that you see in your donation report and your disbursement if you're trying to marry those up. Um, you'll also know what page they donated to as well as lots of other information. Um, within the donor experience section, which we're going to be going into detail about a bit later on, um, you can see what you can set what information that you, you collect during the checkout process that will show in your donation report. So for instance, if collecting phone numbers or addresses from donors is really important to your donor follow-up strategy, um, you can set that during in your donor experience section. The disbursement section of your report uh, center allows you to see your batch disbursement history. Um, you can click on a disbursement listing to open it, open up more information about that disbursement, like which donations were included in that report, as well as a summary total a, a summary of the total amount, um, the total associated fees, and the net amount that's included in that disbursement. Um, all of the donations on the site are processed by the Mighty Cause Found Foundation, which is a donor advised fund. Um, your organization can sign up for electronic funds transfer or EFT, which is the recommended method since it allows fund disbursement twice monthly. So you'll be getting your, donat your donations delivered to you sooner um, and you'll also be getting them more frequently. And just to reiterate, um, you can get your donations by check, but there is a $5 check fee. So there is an incentive for you to sign up for EFT, get your donations quicker and more frequently and uh, avoid that $5 check fee. The analytics submenu in your report section shows you a lot of great stats on donations made to your organization through Mighty Cause. Um, I would definitely recommend checking this section out a few times during the giving day so you have a well-rounded view of where your donations are coming from. If you know most people are giving in the $25 to $50 range, maybe you wanna think about adjusting your suggested donation amounts um, to, the, to uh, what people are, are giving when they actually donate to you, you can also try to bump them up. So this is really helpful to use during the giving event um, and after as well to see you know, what worked for you, what didn't, where donations were coming from and so on. All right, so the next item, and this is a big one, is your, um, your donor experience. Um, there are several submenu options to choose from today, so we're gonna talk about just a few of them. Um, the donor experience is one of the first ones I wanted to hit on, and this is, again, a very important feature for you to focus on when you're setting up your organization 
on Mighty Cause. The donor experience section gives you a lot of control over the donation process um, on Mighty Cause. So we're, we want you to be able to control the experience that you provide for your donors. And we also really want you to collect the information that is important to your nonprofit. So through donor experience, you can make sure that if addresses or phone numbers, again, are very important to your, your donor retention strategy, that you collect that information. Um, you can also customize Customize the um, suggested donation amounts. Those are the amounts. There's four of them that are suggested to donors when they click the donate button. They also have the option of entering in a custom amount. But those are really important because you're catching a donor at a key moment. And a lot of donors really they use them. They they use the suggested donation amounts. They just click $25 or $50 or whatever denomination uh, they feel they can afford um, because some donors can experience a little bit of choice paralysis if they're not told. Um, what what they should donate. So those are really important. Um, looking at your uh, your average donation amount is really helpful in determining what is appropriate to put in there as your suggested donation amounts. And then you also can add uh, suggestions that describe what that amount provides. So uh, for instance, if you have um, you know thirty dollars provide something tangible for your nonprofit that you're able to give to the community, that's a really great experience for a donor. Um, just as an example, I've worked at animal shelters in the past and we could say things like $30 provides a rabies vaccine and a full checkup for a dog in our care or something like that. And that's really powerful because people like to give tangible things. So the more you can do to connect those amounts to tangible things that your nonprofit provides, the stronger experience the donor will have. Um, and one thing that you can also do in this section is preview the donation experience. You don't have to make a test donation. Um, you can go through that process beginning to end in your donor experience tool so that you know if you're going through it and you've selected every single option there is for donors and you go, oh wow, this is way too much. This is a really cumbersome process. You can sort of edit out things that are maybe nice to have but not necessary. Um, so make sure you do that before the giving event so that you know what donors are seeing um, and that you've previewed your process and you feel really comfortable with it and that you know it's not super cumbersome. Um, we don't want to have a ton of steps there but we also want to provide options for you so we leave it to you to preview that experience and make sure that that is um, a, a process that you want your donors to go through and not something that's overly cumbersome or detailed. All right, so the fundraising section on your Mighty Cause Manager is where you will find the matching grants tool. Um, as I'm sure many of you know, having a matching grant from a donor can go a really long way in driving donations. So I want to make sure that you're aware of that tool that Mighty Cause has specifically for that. Um, and we will talk in depth about matching grants in the strategy webinar that's coming up later. Um, but right now, I just wanted to introduce you to the tool. Um, the matching grants tool is a versatile tool, and you have a lot of options for how how you structure your match. Um, while a lot of matches are one-to-one -one matches um, where you give basically the amount that a donor gives is matched one-to-one. -one. So if they, if you have a grant for $1,000, somebody gives $25, that is matched exactly at $25. But you can also shake it up. You can do two to one, um, you can do three to one, and you can also do a match percentage of each donation. So if you have a grantor who says, I want to match 50% of each donation, you can set that up through the matching grants tool. Um, our matching grants tool does the math for you. So all you have to do is really choose how you structure it. And that's a conversation you'll want to have with your grantor. Again, one to one matches are kind of the gold standard but there's a lot of flexibility in there so that if you have uh, somebody providing a grant who has something specific they want to do, we can usually make that happen through the matching grants tool. Um, you can also apply a match when a certain number of donations have been received. Um, for instance, if there was a bonus challenge available for most for the most individual donations, you could say that if you get 100 donations within the hour, you'll get an additional $1,000 for your nonprofit or however your matching grant is set up to help you actually drive donation volume and traffic. 
Um, the matching grants tool allows you to post multiple grants at the same time um, and also in sequence so you can set a bunch of grants to fire one after the other. Um, so that probably sounds like a lot, um, but the tool itself is very user friendly and you have a lot of flexibility in how you structure your match. So I would highly suggest checking out the matching grants tool just to see your possibilities, especially if you're talking to uh, sponsors or community partners about a match right now. Of course, if you get overwhelmed by the possibilities, just setting it up as a one-to-one -one match is the easiest thing that you can possibly do. Under the matching grant section of the fundraiser view, you can also find fundraising templates. Um, you can create a template for Give Out Day to help your supporters create their fundraisers faster. Um, definitely on a giving event, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, which is where your supporters are fundraising on your behalf. They're asking their social network to help you raise funds um, and make a donation to their specific page that they create. Um, that really helps you increase the amount that you give and reach more people on a day where time really matters. And the the, um, the fundraiser templates tool. Sorry, oh, I'm sorry, I was behind one slide. Um, the fundraiser templates tool really allows you to make that process very easy for uh, your fundraisers you have access to one free template um, and it basically allows you to pre-fill some sections of their fundraiser so that they don't have to do it. Um, especially with board members, this is extremely helpful. Um, the more work you can do to help them get up and running a lot more easily and more quickly, is it makes it more likely that they'll actually participate. So when people create a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser for your nonprofit, they will have the option of using this template that you've provided for them that has some information filled out for them, um, and then they can go back in and they can customize it later, or they can opt not to use it, or they can just publish it with what's there. Um, so there's, that gives your, your fundraisers some options and gives them the flexibility to get started, get published, and get fundraising sooner without spending a lot of time investing um, in creating this page from scratch. It is a template. The page creation process is very easy, but as we all know, sometimes board members and people involved with our nonprofit, they're really busy and this just gives them a head start. So fundraising templates are a really great way you can engage peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers and can be a nice incentive and say, hey, we have a template that you can use in there that fills out the most important parts of your page and uh, that can sometimes be the tipping point that says, okay, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna set up a fundraiser for Give Out Day for your nonprofit. So uh, make sure that you know where templates are and spend a little bit of time uh, creating a template for Give Out Day. Um, you can plug some language in there about your nonprofit as well as some information about Give Out Day um, that pre-fills their story for them. So it's really easy. If you have a video or a photo that you're using, um, for your campaign, you can add that there as well so that they don't have to find a photo for you. So the other bonus of fundraising templates is that it really gives you some say in how people fundraise for you. You are giving them information and talking points and visuals that they can use. So fundraising templates are a really great way to start engaging peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers and getting people on board so that when early donations open, you have a lot of boots on the ground telling people about your important work and asking them to make a donation. The last section on your uh, admin part is the settings. Um, if you click settings, it opens a submenu where you can update your organization settings. You can customize your organization's URL, manage your electronic funds transfer so you get all the money you raise during the campaign, update your legal information if needed. Um, sometimes we've pulled in your information from the IRS database. If your address has changed, for instance, you can update that here in your settings. Um, and you can also edit your social sharing options um, if you wanted to add you know a tag for people who retweet from your mighty cause account um, the section it, the settings section is also where you can add or remove admins from your account so moving on from the admin bar in your Mighty Cause account, I want to make you sure that want to make sure that I mentioned the really great tools you can use to as you get ready for Give Out Day that it 
is the nonprofit toolkit. The toolkit has tips and tricks, FAQs, walkthroughs, and it also has templates where you can uh, get email and social media temp uh, templates so that you can use them, customize them, and you don't have to think as hard about it if you're having a little bit of writer's block. Um, it's a really great place to get inspired and get into the weeds of planning your campaign and learning about it. There's a ton of great resources there, um, as well as some graphics that you can use to sort of customize your, your nonprofit's brand for give out day. Um, so definitely take a look at your toolkit resources, utilize them, they are here to help you. Um, and the Horizons Foundation and Mighty Cause work together to provide these for you. So please take a look at what's there and see what's of use to you um, because the more you utilize these, the better prepared you will be for give out day. All right, as we wrap this up, I want to make sure that you have our support team's contact information. Um, they're a really great resource before and during the challenge for anything campaign related. Um, so if you need help setting up your EFT, if you need help with strategy around the prizes, or if your donor just needs a receipt, um, the Mighty Cause support team is here to help you out with that. So you can reach us at support at mightycause.com. Um, we are Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 Eastern Standard Time. Um, and you can also give us a call at 202-800-1618. Um, just if you need any help from us, please let us know. We're here to help you and our team is, they're all experts on the platform. So don't, there's no question that's too dumb. We can always help you and we're happy to share our knowledge with you and help you get oriented on the platform and do the things you want to do so that you can raise a ton of money for your important work on Give Out Day. And I mentioned this a little bit earlier, um, but if you want to move on to strategy, I recommend that you uh, register for the second webinar, which is all about strategy. Um, that is um, Wednesday, February 12th at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Um, the second webinar is really where we're going to get into the weeds about how to use matching grants, prizes, um, how to set up your marketing for give out day. So kind of less of the dry informational platform oriented stuff and more of the strategy strategy that you're probably going to be really interested in. Um, so go ahead and register. Um, that is on the uh, in the toolkit, I believe, on Give Out Day's website. Um, and before we jump on to questions, um, I just wanted to check in with Nicole and see if there were any um, other pieces of information that you wanted to share um, with, with our registrants and the people on this webinar. Hi, thanks. Thanks, Linda. Um, yeah, I do. Um, I wanted to circle back to um, some uh, the leaderboards just really quickly. We will be making announcements about what leaderboards are going to be available this year um, in the coming weeks. But I just wanted to make sure that folks know that for Give Out Day, our leaderboards, at least the ones that we currently know about, um, are all based on the number of unique donors and not on the total dollars raised. Um, so it's really about in addition to you know fundraising for your nonprofit, it's really about um, sort of growing your donor base. Um, so uh, that that's why we like to do it based on the unique donors versus dollars raised, so that like some major donor can't come in and give one extremely large gift, and then uh, you know that that organization gets a prize because of that. Um, uh, that's about all that I have to add. Um, I'm just uh, uh, here to answer any questions that are more about. Um, the you know rules and regulations or anything like that and uh, Linda will handle anything that's about uh, registration and the um, uh, the platform. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we've got some, some questions already in the queue. Um, if you have one that you want to ask while you have both Nicole and myself on the line, uh, feel free to go into that questions box and type your question in. Um, so we'll get started with a, a question about a monthly donor on the old platform, Click and Pledge, um, transferring them over to Mighty Cause. We have at least one monthly donor on the old platform. Is there an easy way to transfer them over from Click and Pledge? That is a really great question for our support team. They can help you through that. Um, typically, just as a general rule, when it comes to people's credit card information, we can't, as a platform, um, decide, okay, well, you're going to get charged on our website now because that's just not how credit card authorizations work. Um, so you will need to work with the donor to get their donation moved over to the Mighty Cause platform. Um, but if you want to contact our support team, um, they can help you 
with that, um, but just generally as a rule, we're just not able to take somebody's recurring donation that they set up through one payment portal and move it over to ours without their informed consent. Um, so we do need to work with the donor to do that, but just contact our support team at um, mighty, support at mightycause.com and we can help you get that set up. All right, so uh, this is a great question for Nicole. Um, when is a good date to start promoting our campaign? Um, well, uh, we're gonna, as we uh, talked about earlier, we're going to be opening early registration, I mean, not early registration, early giving on March 26th. So that's kind of when the sort of social media push will really, really kind of amp up. But in my opinion, it's never too early to do a save the date, let folks know that it's coming, you know, start posting on social media. So folks, so there's content that people can follow. Don't overdo it, obviously. Um, but um, as soon as you are, you know, have your page set up and are ready to go, um, you can start promoting it um, across your channels and to uh, you know, your email lists and to however, however else you uh, communicate with your current donors. Yeah, and just to piggyback off of that, um, one thing that I think nonprofits are often concerned about with early donations is that they only have one shot with each donor, and that's their only chance to get donations, so they want to save it for the big day. But that is usually not how donors behave. What we tend to see is that your biggest supporters will be happy to donate more than once. So don't be too afraid to tell them about Give Out Day and get them donating, because typically your biggest supporters are going to come back on the giving day itself when you have a lot of activity happening, you're going to have matching grants, I hope, and there's going to be prizes available. So don't worry about only having one donation from each person. That's generally not how donors behave on giving events. You'll usually see a couple of donations from your supporters. Um, so don't be too afraid to, once donations are open, to solicit them and you know ask them to make a donation. And one thing that can also be really helpful is um, sort of getting some seed donations from your big biggest supporters, for instance, your board of directors, um, your recurring donors, the people that you can really count on to be there for your nonprofit and show up to support you, um, doing some targeted marketing to those people to ask them to help you build up momentum for your campaign can be a really great way to get that number a little bit higher before the event and also reach out to these really valuable supporters of your nonprofit. All right. so. Um, there is a really um, specific question that I'm going to pass on to Nicole in an email about the requirements for the event, um, but it's a really specific question, so I'll just pass that on to her um, at, to go offline with that question. Um, oh, this is a good one. Is there a penalty for not reaching our goals? Um, as the Mighty Cause representative, I can tell you absolutely not. We are not an all or nothing platform, so whatever money you raise, or give out day or outside of give out day, you receive. There's no, um, there's you, you are not required to reach your funding goal. That's really something that you can use as a marketing tool and to help build up excitement. But um, you know, if you set your goal at $500 and you raise $200, you get the, you get those $200. There's no penalty or anything like that. Everything that you raise, you will get. Right, and I just want to add that um, with the metrics on your site, you have the ability to ch um, change the the goal um, in real time on the day. So, say you set a ten thousand dollar goal and you're you blow past that and you're at twelve thousand dollars and you don't want to discourage people from giving because you already made your goal, you can raise that goal. Or conversely, if you know you set a kind of stretch goal and you feel like you're not getting there and you um, want it to seem like you're actually meeting your goal, then you can lower it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you have total flexibility to do that. We want you to keep every cent that you, you raise and everything else on the platform is really just to support you in that, including the goal amount that you set. So there's no penalty whatsoever. Um, the next question um, I'm happy to take is, are donations available right away? Um, for they're not available right away, as in like you can cash them out and just put them into your bank account. As I was mentioning with the disbursements, we batch them together and we, we either send them to you via EFT, so direct deposit into your nonprofit's bank account, 
or we send you a check. Um, but we do that to make it easier for you to account for all of these donations so that there's not a million different deposits <laughs> for each donation. So we'll batch them together um, and we'll send them to you and you can access a detailed report of that disbursement so that you can see exactly what was included in that. But you won't get them immediately, but you will you will get them. If you're, you wanna get them as soon as possible, I really recommend signing up for EFT so that you can get them just direct deposited into your account. And correct me if I'm wrong, but there's you, you guys have specific um, dates that you do the disbursement. Is is that correct? Yes. So for a check, uh, we send it out on the 10th, and there's a little bit of fudge factor from there because it has to go to a mailing house and then get to your organization's address through the U.S. Postal Service. But we process it on the 10th, um, and it'll get there whenever the Postal Service gets it there. Um, for EFT, we do it on the 10th and the 25th. And because that is direct, they just show up in your account on those days, 10th and the 25th. If for some reason the 10th is on a Sunday, you'll get it um, usually the day before um, because banks are not open on Sundays. But um, yeah, you EFT is really the easiest option. You'll get those disbursements regularly on the 10th and the 25th. If it's a check, um, you will get it, we'll cut it to you around the 10th, um, and then it'll be mailed to you, which, you know, can take a little bit of time, uh, but that'll be for the previous calendar month. So on the 10th of, say, April, you would get a check for all of the donations that took place in March. Um, and if you have any questions about when to expect a disbursement, or if you have, a, you're not sure why you haven't received yours yet, you can always contact support and we're happy to look up that information and let you know what's happening. Um, but it's generally very, uh, very much like clockwork. We just process them, we batch them together, we send them to you through whatever you've chosen. All right, so um, what is a good goal for an org with a small budget, less than 25,000 per year? Um, I'll let you tackle that one, Nicole. Um, you know, it, it, the, the, the goal setting is really less about what your annual budget is, I think, and more about um, uh, how engaged you think your donors and your network who are going to be um, helping you get the word out uh, are, are are going to be engaged on the day. Um, so, you know, I would set, you know, maybe think low, like five 5,000. If you want to set it at 10,000, that would be, you know, ha almost half your budget for the year, which would be fantastic. Um, and I've actually seen organizations very small actually hit goals like that um, uh, because they have done such a fantastic job of building out their page and running a really good campaign, both via email and social media. Um, so, but again, because that that metric can be changed, it's really just about what you think your network and your potential donors are going to um, going to do. Yeah, and you know, one thing that I, I like to tell people when they're concerned about like, what do I set as my goal? What do I aim for? Is generally speaking, most nonprofits will raise about the same as they did, if not a little bit more in their last fundraising campaign. So um, take a look at the last time you were doing a fundraising blitz for whatever purpose, whether it was Giving Tuesday, end of year, or if you had like an event happening um, and see what you raised. Um, and it'll typically be around that amount. Um, if you have peer-to-peer -peer fundraising happening, you can push that a little bit because you'll have more people um, out there, you know, talking up your nonprofit and you may be able to acquire some more donors, but whatever you did for your last campaign is a really good place to start in terms of, um, you know, what you can expect to raise. Um, you usually do pick up some donors through participation, participation in a giving event, but that's, if you're just kind of lost on the goal aspect, looking at your last fundraising campaign and what you were able to do there, um, you're gonna have the same donor base to start out with, so that's usually a good place to start. Um, all right, so there's a question about fiscal sponsorship. So I'll just read the whole thing and then we'll, I'll, fiscal sponsorships on Mighty Cause can, th there's a process for that. So I just wanted to tackle this question. Um, if my nonprofit wants to ask, act as a fiscal sponsor for multiple LGBT filmmakers who would have their own individual pages, how would I go about doing that? I've seen other fiscal sponsors do that before on Give Out Day. Um, so. Uh, I don't know for sure that you would need in this particular situation um, 
need to have a fiscal sponsorship set up, it kind of depends on where you want the money to go. So if you want the money to go to the filmmakers, um, you could just have them set it up as peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraisers, and then they you could see where the source of those donations is uh, in your donation report. So you can see, oh, you know, Joe Smith, he raised $500 on his page, and then you can disperse that to him however you'd like at your organization. So treating them as peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers is typically a little bit easier um, than setting up a full fiscal sponsorship situation because typically how that works is we basically uh, create um, a full nonprofit profile for them on our platform, which doesn't sound like it's what you want here if you wanted to get some individuals involved and you have some sort of arrangement with them, but you want the money to still come to your nonprofit, they would just need to create fundraisers. If you have an organization who, for some reason, does not have their 501c3 yet, or they have some other kind of um, situation with tax tax exempt status um, you and you want to set up a, a separate formal fiscal sponsorship with them contact support and we'll help you take care of that there is a process that involves a memorandum of understanding um, so that's a little bit dense but typically if you just want to get a lot of individuals involved in raising money and have the money go to your nonprofit and not say go directly to that filmmaker um, you would just want to have them set up as peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers we issue the disbursement it needs to go to a 501c three nonprofit because of um, the Mighty Cause Charitable Foundation's position as a, a donor advised fund. What you do with the money once you have it, if you're divvying it up to different filmmakers, that is 100% you. Um, but if, if for that particular situation where you have multiple filmmakers, um, I would set them up with their, their own individual fundraiser pages for your nonprofit. And that way, the donations are tax deductible and whatever you do with the disbursement is is totally up to you. Um, but that would be the way I'd like to handle it if for some reason your nonprofit has your 501c3 and you want to help another organization who um, does not have a 501c3 participate and give out day as, as an organization, um, we can also do that. So that's something that you can contact support about. There's a process that's a lot easier if we give you a list of the different steps. Um, it's not that complicated, but we do need some, some paperwork for it. So just that doesn't sound like it applies to this specific situation, but just uh, I wanted to let everybody know if that is a, a, something that you're interested in, that is a possibility on Mighty Cause. Um, if you wanted to help enable another organization that has a similar mission participate in the giving event. Um, so I hope that answers your question, um, but I think that peer-to-peer -peer fundraising and just having all of the money go to your nonprofit funneled through your page is the best way to handle that specific fundraising quandary. I actually, um, can I actually, I want to I want to break in because for, for at least for Horizons Giving event, um, we would prefer that each of the filmmakers participate separately from the fiscal sponsor because of the impact of the leaderboard and the unique donors situation. Okay. Um, so if they're going to, if the filmmakers are fundraising for the fiscal sponsor and it's not going to be dispersed, broken out to the filmmakers, then that fundraiser way um, is perfectly fine. But for our rules and regulations um, for leaderboard inclusion, the filmmakers would each need to um, uh, participate separately as a fiscally sponsored project. Um, uh, so that the unique donors are not all rolling up into one account. Okay, yeah, and, and if that's the case and you need to set them up as their own, basically their own organization on Mighty Cause, um, your first step would be to contact support because we do need a paper trail in order to legally dispense funds to them um, so that the IRS understands why we diverted donations to this particular organization that is not 501c3. So um, contact support at MightyCause.com and they can help you get set up with that. Um, okay, so just to clarify, the minimum donation to count toward the donor total is still ten dollars. Um, so from a platform perspective, we can't. The minimum that somebody can donate on the platform is five dollars. For the event, the suggested minimum is ten dollars, I believe. Um, we can't prevent them from giving five dollars, um, but uh, uh, that's the the ten dollars is the suggested minimum for the giving event, if I'm understanding correctly. Yes, that's right. Yes. 
Okay, so this is a good question for Nicole. Um, do fundraising campaigns need to be specifically for our LGBTQ plus program or can it be for something else? It needs to be specifically for an LGBTQ plus program. So anybody that's participating in Give Out Day, if they are participating as a organization that is not an LGBTQ primary organization, which we define as having LGBTQ explicitly as part of your mission, um, having LGBTQ uh, majority staff and uh, leadership, um, and uh, have serving primarily LGBTQ people. If that's not your organization, but you have a program that is specifically uh, um, targeting LGBTQ people, then you can fundraise for the program. But the, the fundraising page would need to be reflective of the program and not the overall nonprofit. Yeah, and you can easily set up your organization page for that. So for instance, um, if it's just a program and it doesn't have its own IRS um, tax exempt number, you can just set up your profile to reflect the specific program that you're fundraising for, like changing the, the name so that it's, you know, this particular program of our nonprofit and all of your information reflects that. Um, and you can also set up a fundraiser page um, for a particular program and use that if you would like to. But um, if you're not planning on using Mighty Cause year round, you can easily just customize your profile to reflect the program and, and it, it specify that in your, your about section, your description so that people understand that, that uh, this donation goes toward that particular program. Um, and then I think the last question we have is, um, do the prizes go to the organization or to a donor? Um, so Nicole, did you want to take that one? Yeah, the prizes go to the organization. Yep, that was a pretty easy one um, for <laughs> <laughs> unique donor prizes. Um, you will, uh, especially when it comes to golden tickets, which are the hourly prizes, you'll see them associated with the particular donor and donation. Um, if the donor chooses to be anonymous, then you won't see their name, but people like to see that they helped their favorite organization win an extra $100, $200, whatever the prize worth is. And that's a great tool to reach out to that donor and thank them for their help in winning that prize. Um, but the money goes to your organization. All right, so I think that is all of the questions we have for today. Um, again, if you have any other questions, you can always contact Mighty Cause Support or you can contact Nicole. Um, I'm also happy to answer any questions. We did record this webinar, um, so you will have access to the recording if you wanted to share it with anybody um, at your organization who's helping you with Give Out Day. Um, and we'll also put the slides up as well so you can have those um, to review or share them with anybody who's helping you as well. Um, so thank you, Nicole, for uh, helping to answer some of these questions. Um, and thank you all for, for coming to this webinar and spending uh, so much time with us today to talk about Give Out Day. Great. Thank you, everybody. Have a good rest of your day. And we look forward to supporting your Give Out Day campaign. Yes. Happy fundraising. <laughs>